Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of um, the Cabinet on the 27th of June 2024. Just a reminder that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, we haven't received any apologies. I think everyone's here. Um, so on to item two, the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 25th of April 2024. They're here for appro approval. Um, can I just ask how you want us to do this, Ian, as we weren't here to? Um, as there's no other members that were in the meeting, you can just sign them off, Carol. As, yeah. So, yeah, I'm happy for that. That's fine. Um, so, item three then, declarations of interest. Has anybody got any interest to declare? No? That's brilliant. Item five, matters are referred to the Cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedure rules. We have a report from Councillor Sam Smith, Chair of Corporate Scrutiny, and if I can ask Sam to give his report, please. Thank you, Chair. Evening all. So, last year, a cross-committee working group was established under corporate scrutiny. The working group's first item was to look at damp and mould. At the meeting of the committee on the 7th of February, housing, general housing repairs were considered. The working group then met on the 6th of March, where a focus was taken on voids. A number of questions were emailed to officers who provided the working group with information they had requested and attended a committee meeting on the 18th of March to answer initial questions with a view to return to full committee on the 22nd of April with a full response. <clears throat> at, the, at the meeting of corporate scrutiny on the 22nd of April, where the housing void update report had been circulated, the committee raised a number of concerns around the voids process, including the time taken to turn around voids and the associated costs, the capacity of the contractor to manage the work and the change in turnaround times seen since the change of contractor, the current recovery rate of rechargeable repairs, concerns around the possibility of the contractor completing property inspections on council assets on behalf of the council, the council removing some improvement that could benefit the incoming tenant. So the assistant director of neighborhoods, um, she attended on behalf of the assistant director of assets, provided an update on how the rent loss was addressed, including liquidated and ascertained uh, damages from the contractor where properties were not returned within expected times. They update uh, the committee, they updated the committee on ideas for addressing turnaround times through work with the contractor on service improvement as well as tenancy management to, prom to promote prevention such as annual inspections, incentive to return properties in good condition, etc. The committee were advised that whole stock survey that was taking place to provide a baseline for the council to look at improving the service. The officer updated the committee upon the barriers to recovering recharge rechargeable repairs. <clears throat> so following the dis discussion, the committee resolved to make three recommendations to cabinet in this area. <clears throat> so these are recommendations that were moved at the time uh, by the chair of corporate scrutiny Councillor Daniel Cook and seconded by Councillor Ben Price. First recommendation was to instruct officers to review the costs versus return of employing an in-house inspection team to see if we can drive down the costs of voids. Number two, to review how we recover damages, damages costs from existing tenants and to see if there is a more proactive way we can approach this long term. Number three, that the portfolio holder for housing and planning calls Equons in to address members' major concerns around void turnaround times and ask them that their action, what their action plan is to improve this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Do we have any questions? No questions, just a couple. 
Yeah, we'll go on to um, points then. Thanks for the report, Sam. Um, so I'm just going to go through some of the recommendations and, and what we plan to do. Um, so on the first one, um, we absolutely will take this away um, and then I'll come back to corporate scrutiny um, in the future. We'll get it on the, the forward plan. Um, but yeah, um, we, I think we need to we need to look at the details of the cost versus the returns on like an employee and an in-house inspection team, as you know, um, and also the, the implications on the HRA business plan. Um, but always the, the portfolio will work portfolio holder will work close with the uh, the assistant directors to ensure that this work is done and we we make sure that it's effective in costs versus returns um on the second recommendation um as you know we do raise recharges um, and it is challenging sometimes but i think there is a piece of work there to do on education and some questions to answer on do we do enough um on like resident sign up are we engaging with residents enough so they know what condition the property has to go back in so absolutely happy to take that forward um, and on the third one I will be meeting with Equans um, and their senior team and they will be attending a future corporate scrutiny if that's right with you absolutely um, it's good to see the support there I suppose um, yeah I just I just say that um, on the first one what we're saying there is that we're at least taking the first step to obviously review what the costs are going to be and then obviously we can decide to, to how we're going to move forward with that the second one was um if i remember correctly the voids you know the costs around it have, mass have, have massively well the turnaround as well has massively increased and obviously we need to um certainly be as it says very much more proactive and um and i do agree with the third one as well very much uh, we need to um we need to understand their position in this, and that's a inc incredibly um, important part to the to the uh, to the approach. I would also say, just generally, you know, like a lot of these things, they become actually quite holistic in nature. There's a lot of moving parts, so um, we do have to understand where this fits into the wider um, game that is, you know, housing, I suppose. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Has anybody else got any comments? Yes, Sarah. Uh, apologies, Councillor Dean. I know you've seen the questions pie. It's just in response to Councillor Smith's. Is that all right to do? Thank you. Think about what you just said, how I look again at number one, and it talks about the review, very similar to number two, the review. And yet in number one, we've also got employing an in-house inspection team. Would it be possible to all to have one, which is that idea of the review, which I can see this portfolio holder has already kind of begun and people are starting to kind of have that as an actual piece of work rather than a separate, and now we go into the places and inspect. I might be confused. Please correct me if so. I think I got half of that, <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, the idea of um, inspections would be separate to a review. Yeah, what I would say is, because there's a lot that uh, Councillor Clark is, is going to be, I'm assuming, involved in this. So I think I would say that it's incumbent on him to probably actually direct some of this and based on, you know, the findings, I suppose, to work out what the, what the best approach is and, and, of course, keep corporate scrutiny updated. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a big piece of work and it's about going away and finding which, which options work best and, and, and whether there will be a cost versus... Uh, versus a return, so yeah, and I'll well, absolutely keep scrutiny and cabinet updated. I just wanted to reiterate again that the um, the recommendations and the you know the conversation around this report was done um, by my predecessor and obviously those that were on the cross uh, committee um, on on that working group. So um, you know it's it's mostly their report. So uh, thank you to those that obviously were contributing to the uh, to the recommendations yeah yes um, I think um, looking at the recommendations that would be in line with what we'd be, be looking to do anyway so uh, the recommendations are, are helpful uh, in looking at where we will make and can make improvements to our services so um, I would thank the scrutiny committee for for, for, for that and uh, we'll certainly be looking at it. I'm, I'm sure Ben will uh, be looking at it intensely and moving that forward. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any more? Yes, Ben. I'm just going to say that to um, 
I would just say that this, um, this contract is probably one of our most important ones, and it's one that we definitely have to get right. So it, it, is, it was a good piece of work. There was a lot went on in it. Uh, so the recommendations are as follows then. Um, to instruct officers to review the cost versus return of employing an in-house inspection team to see if we can drive down the costs of voids. Number two, to review how we recover damages, damages costs from existing tenants and see if there is a more proactive way we can approach this long term. And number three, that the portfolio holder calls equines in to address members' major concerns around void turnaround times and ask them what their action plan is to improve this. Do we have a proposal? Councillor Clark and a seconder. Councillor Smith, all those in favour? Thank you. That's that one carried. Thank you very much. We will go on to item six. I haven't missed one of them. on item six. This is um, amendment to the terms of reference for the Staffordshire Leaders Board. Um, you will all have seen the paper that is here from the Staffordshire Leaders Board. Um, we, the purpose of this is that the Cabinet consider the revised terms of reference agreed by the Staffordshire Leaders Board and that we uh, consider and agree the updates made to the terms of reference for the Board. I'm sure everyone who's looked at this document will agree that it's a really important thing that we're part of this. We need to be in there in the mix. It, you can tell by the, the bits on the executive summary the impact that working together can make. And we saw this um, to a great degree during the pandemic. It's when people have to come together and do stuff. Uh, is there any questions? on this is everybody content there's no questions no statement does anybody wants to make right i'll ask for a mover for this then please councillor clark and a seconder councillor smith all those in favor thank you and um mr gabriel if you can remind me of the substitute after this meeting that would be brilliant thank you <laughs> I didn't read out the proposal. Do I need to, or is that all right? That's fine. Right. So, number seven, sustainability and productivity plan. So, the, the purpose of this report is to provide the Cabinet with information and a timetable for the financial stability plan and productivity plan. This report has been considered by corporate scrutiny on 25th of June 2024, so a couple of days ago. So it's recommended that Cabinet approve the approach and timetable detailed in the financial stability plan, the budget and medium term financial planning process, the productivity plan prior to submission and for publication to the, to the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, and to the delegation for finalisation and sign-off of the productivity plan to the leader and chief executive. There's been an awful lot of work gone into this, as you will see from um, the table, table one on the second page, it sets out where we are with our budget plans going forward. Uh, I'm hoping that everybody has totally scrutinised all of this because there is a lot to take in on it and it's one of the most important bits that we will do is looking at our finances going forward. But the, the finance team have worked very hard on this and have put together some, some options going forward that we can look at how we're going to manage our finan financial plan going forward with um, items such as budget manager review, so we'll be asking the budget holders to be looking at their areas of spend and see if there is any movement on that. We've also got an area of zero-based budgeting where we're, the, the council will be looking at two budget areas this year and starting from a, a zero level and building it up and seeing how that works. We've got an area of spend to save where we can look to 
to where there will be some projects that can be identified through the budget process and then the opportunities for service transformation. Um, has anybody got anything on the sustainability part? Any questions for anybody? Yes, David. Yeah, did we get any, any recommendations or any input back from the corporate scrutiny on this? No, I, we, well, there was questions but there was no recommendations that came back, was the councillors, no? No? So okay. we have to assume that corporate scrutiny were happy with the direction that was right. being taken. And the second part of this is the productivity plan, which is um, all started through a letter that we've had from, let me find his name again, Simon Hoare, the Minister for Local Government, asking us several questions at which we have to put into a productivity plan, which we will then have to pub send to government, but we will have to publish. So the, the paperwork in your plan, in your um, pack, is a draft copy. This, th there, will, there will still be some movement on this, but then it will be worked up into something that we can be proud to have out on our website and send off to government. Has anybody got any questions about the productivity plan? I think most people have seen it before. Yeah, David. Yeah, I think in general terms, this is uh, very much in line with what we were thinking about doing anyway. Um, obviously, there is a, a deficit per, um, in the budget, you know, uh, further off, the further on down the, the road. So we obviously have to do something, um, and this approach seems um, uh, to be the best way forward of, of uh, making sure that, you know, in future years we can still bad, um, um, balance our budget. Um, um, and in terms of uh, the publication of the document on the website, I think we need, do need to do a bit of work in um, making it, you know, more acceptable to the general public so it, you know, it reads better and it's more, um, uh, you know, better for them to be able to understand it. Um, uh, at the moment, it probably is not. We, you know, we would understand it because you're doing it every day of the week, but I think it needs to be, um, a, you know, um, a bit more bullet pointy um, and a bit more um, jazzed up so, um, you know, it's uh, more acceptable to the general public. Other than that, um, I'm very happy with where this report's gone. Thank you. I, I think, you know, reading through what what we've got so far is, is absolutely brilliant. We've, we've got the points in that we need to do, but we do have to always be mindful of the presentation of our things. And while we sit in meetings and we look at what can only be described as dry documents, you know, if we want people to engage, and this is a big thing for us, that we want people to be able to engage, it, you, you need to get them in so that they want to read this thing. Because there is no point to all this work if nobody reads it at the end of the day. And we want people to read it and understand it and know what we're doing so that when we go out and talk to them, they know what we're about. So the recommendations, has anybody else got any more comments? No? So the recommendations are that the Cabinet approve the approach and timetable detailed in the Financial Stability Plan, the budget and medium-term financial planning process, the productivity plan prior to submission and full publication to the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, and the delegation for the finalisation and sign-off of the productivity plan to the leader and chief executive. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Clark and a seconder. Councillor Foster. All those in favour? Thank you very much. So item eight is write-offs to the 1st of April 23 to the 31st of March 2024. So the report you have in front of you details the write-offs for the financial year and members are asked to endorse the amount of debt written off in this period. Um, this, in the tables that I've seen, does show that this is going in the right direction for a lot of the areas. In 22-23, our council tax debt was 23,000. This year, it's only 
thousand. Um, is it thousands? It's thousands, isn't it? Not millions. Thousands. Yes. Sorry, I got worried. Yeah. Slightly worried then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the business rates uh, again last year was ninety-two thousand. This year is twenty-six thousand. Um, the the only one that's a little bit troubling is the housing one, and I think I would like a bit more information on that. But the, you know, we do have to be mindful that many of our residents and customers have been financially impacted by the pandemic and the cost of living crisis and uh, it should be noted that we we don't consider signing off these debts unless we've pursued them to the fullest extent but in cases where extreme hardship is identified discretionary housing payments and additional council tax reductions have been made and consideration given to writing off accumulated arrears. So the council is committed to ensuring that debt write-offs are kept to a minimum by taking all reasonable steps to collect the monies due. And there will be situations where the debt recovery process fails to recover some or all of the debt, and this will need to be considered for write-off in accordance with the corporate credit policy. So we, as a council, we view such cases as exceptions before writing off the debt the council has to satisfy itself that all reasonable steps have been taken to collect it and that no further recovery action is possible or practicable. It will take into account the age, size and type of the debt together with any factors it feels relevant to the individual case. Has anybody got any questions they'd like to ask? Yes? Um, just to small question which is there's obviously quite a big difference between this year and last year and I wondered what that was due to like why why is it so drastically different and is it likely to be going down again next year or going up like what are the factors within our control it can vary quite a lot each year depending on if you have one large debt it can have quite a big impact so some of the larger business rate debts for NNDR debts for example can be quite large so it can it can fluctuate quite a lot between between years so I wouldn't obviously if you have a, an ongoing trend that goes up then that's an area of concern and that is something that we do look at but it's it's difficult I, I can't tell you exactly what debts were in last year to be able to compare here now, but I can certainly get back to you if that would help. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, you know the answer. Sorry, um, I have got a bit more information in terms of the, the way the number of debts that were written off last year, and Councillor Dean did um, mention some of this. So the council tax write-offs are a lot less the year just gone than they were previously. Um, I think this is a reflection of the, the pandemic. So during COVID times, um, we weren't allowed to take recovery action in a lot of cases. So there were no courts, for example. And um, so recovery action did stall for a long time. So the team are now picking that back up and, and working proactively with customers who have got arrears to try and help them to, to pay what they can, when they can. But um, there are cases where you know, we can't take any further action. Um, and it might be that businesses have, have gone bust, for example, so, or debts are time uh, barred after six years. So in those cases, we would um, write those debts off. Um, so it, it depends, as um, Becky said, sometimes we can have small amounts, sometimes they, they may be larger. It just depends on individual cases. Yeah, just a quick question. Um, in looking at these uh, debts, um, are these in line with similar authorities, you know, what they would sort of write off? So a similar authority to ourselves, are they in line with, you know, what other authorities have to write off? Um, so just, uh, are, we, are we sort of doing quite well or, or not so well? Well, so our collection rates are, are very high, we consistently collect sort of in the high 90%, 98% of 99% of debts so um, you're in further than that that we do chase everything that we can and our write-off amounts are absolutely kept to a minimum
On um, page 47, the summary of sundry income write-offs, um, it says here on the breakdown, total £285 and the reasons team folded no assets. But then at the bottom where it says overall total, it says 30000 On the other ones, it says at page 48, it gives that breakdown. Um, but where's that large increase come from? Maybe it's been clarified and I'm just not sure on if I've heard. So are you referring to the quarter by quarter breakdowns at the bottom of the page? Oh yeah, Appendix C. So it says, um, page 47, sundry income write-offs, uh, 1st of the 4th to the 31st of the 3rd. Um, it says about like, the breakdown, 9th of the 1st, 2024, £285 for the total. But then at the bottom of the page it says overall total 30000 I'm just wondering what that... Yeah, so... Sorry. Sorry. That's made up of the previous quarter's right. reports, which would have been brought to Cabinet um, last year. Um, I mean, I can get that information for you again, or it is available in previous reports. Anyone else? Anybody else? Um, I think my question is around those sundry things. I completely understand the other things. Can you give us a bit more background on what this encompasses? What kind of things are in the sundry? What kind of debts? Yes, yeah. Right. What is made up by It could be all sorts of things. It could be um, commercial, industrial rent, rents for units, or um, debtors invoice for things like um, weddings at the castle, or events at the the assembly rooms, or so, you know, just the general other different types of income that we raise invoices for. So basically, this is anything that doesn't fit into those other categories. A, a another. Right. That's fine, thank you. Are there any more questions? So, um, the recommendation is that we endorse the amount of debt written off for the period 1st of April 2023 to the 31st of March 2024, for Appendix A and E. Um, do I not need a mover and a seconder for this? It just says take the vote. No, but a mover, please. Sarah and seconder. Oh, seconder. David. All those in favour? <coughs> Thank you very much. And we come on to item nine. Last but very much not least, because we're all very excited about this. It's the corporate peer review. Um, I think most of the cabinet will have already had some input into this and been talking about it. So this, the purpose of this report is to advise members of the corporate peer challenge that is being undertaken on the 29th to the 31st of October 2024 by the Local Government Association and seek approval for the programme of work in the run-up and following the review. And our recommendations are that Cabinet note the peer challenge that will be undertaken at the said time, and the scope will include core elements and the use of technology and innovation. Item two, that the Cabinet approve the programme of work in preparing for the review and commit to the publication deadlines as set out in Appendix 1. Do I have any questions on the peer review? Do I have any statements? on it. Does anybody want to say anything about what they've been looking at? Right, I will just say thank you to Christy Timms for all the work that's been done on this. We, we seem very much to have hit the ground running on it. I'm very pleased with the way all this has gone through and the time span and the amount that we've already managed to achieve. It, it, it is an exciting thing and we, we look forward to it. Um, it coming to fruition. Just making sure that there's nothing else. Right, so I will just read out those recommendations again. That Cabinet note the corporate peer challenge will be undertaken 29th to the 31st of October 2024 and the scope will include core elements and the use of technology and innovation. Item two, that the Cabinet approve the programme of works in preparing for the review and commit to the publication deadlines as set out in Appendix 1. 
Do I have a mover? Councillor Clark and a seconder. Councillor Nova. All those in favour? Thank you very much. So thank you, members. That concludes the business of the meeting, and I close the meeting at 6.30.